guys and welcome back. We have something special for you today. It is my daughter Jocelyn's own gluten-free, nice and chocolate fudgy brownies. And they are sugar alternative. And one of the lovely things about this recipe, if you guys have baked anything gluten-free, you know how temperamental those things can be and very, very fussy. Something that is so incredible about this recipe is that these, this recipe is very forgiving. So if you're scared about trying things that are gluten-free, give these a try because I know you're just going to love them. All right, we're going to get started right away. We've got coconut sugar in our mixing bowl and in goes our melted butter. And don't be panicked right off the bat because I'm not telling you amounts. Those will be in the description box, okay? Okay, now when that's thoroughly mixed, and remember that with sugar, with coconut sugar, remember it doesn't melt into your butter or whatever that you're using. So you're just going to mix that together really, really well. All right, now into that is going to go our eggs. And this recipe calls for three full large eggs. And again, you can see that I'm doing this all at the same time. Once again, a very forgiving recipe. Okay, now we're going to add our buttermilk. And then we'll add, and we're going to go ahead and add in our vanilla right there. And then go in our dry ingredients. So we are going to sprinkle in our salt. And then in goes our cocoa. And our gluten-free flour blend. And we're using the King Arthur's gluten-free flour blend for this recipe. Okay, now let's get these into our buttered pan. Now you can see how quickly this recipe goes, you guys. In fact, a lot of times my daughter even mixes this by hand with just a bowl and a whisk. So remember to butter your pan. You're going to use like an eight depends on with brownies now your cooking times will vary but remember that with brownies you can do an eight by eight pan if you want them really thick or you can do a nine by 13 if you want them really you know more thin like that okay so just decide how you want them to come out and then just if you're using a glass pan just make sure that you butter that really well. In fact, any pan, you just want to make sure that you butter it pretty good. With a glass pan, I like to butter it just a little bit more than I would a metal pan, just to ensure that they don't stick to the bottom when they're coming out. And there we go. And it goes into a preheated 350 oven. All right. And these should be done in about 25 minutes, but depending on, you know, the size of the pan, it could take less. If you're using a 9 by 13, they're probably going to be done somewhere around 18 minutes. So just depending on what size you use, if you're using this size, this is like a 9 by 10 inch pan, they should be done somewhere around that 25 minute mark. Okay, guys. Now these, let's see. I set it for 25 but I took them out at 23 and a half, okay? So these were 23 and a half minutes. Here's the thing about chocolate, and I know I've said this before, but with chocolate, it's so easy to burn it. And your chocolate can go from done to burnt in. It's so fast. So whenever you are working with chocolate, in a cake or a brownie, error on the side of a little under rather than a little over, and then your toothpick method, and it's coming out clean. 
but the aroma is wonderful. So I know that we have not burnt it up. Oh, and there's that timer telling me it was time to take, it, take them out, but I did. Uh, gut instinct, I wanted to check those a little bit ahead of time to make sure that they had not burnt. And it was good that we did. So, all right. So these are going to go cool on a rack until really good and cool. And then we're going to cut them and enjoy them. Okay, guys, our gluten-free, nice, dark, fudgy brownies are done and cool. So we are going to cut these. And I'm going to cut these in nice, generous squares. Hey, hey, hey. And if my cut lines aren't straight, don't you fuss at me. I struggle with that. A lot of times when I'm cutting something, I know that the lines are going like that, not, you know, I don't know why. Anyway. So, now when Jocelyn makes these, usually she tops these with her peanut butter. And I know this is going to sound weird, but trust me, it is so good. Her peanut butter and cream cheese frosting. We have a friend who actually asks for Jocelyn to make her a, a container of the peanut butter frosting for herself to take home, and she does, so that she can eat it with a spoon. All right, I'm just deciding which one of these I want to pull out because they all just look so good. Yum! Look at this, you guys. Okay, now like I said, Jocelyn usually does this with her peanut butter cream cheese frosting. If you want to see that recipe, leave me a little comment on that and we'll see if we can talk her into that, okay? <laughs> Let me just volunteer her, you know. My kids are always telling me, Mom, you don't volunteer us, you volunteer us to do things. So I know. And, but, I like my brownies either plain or with a little bit of the Swerve Confectioner's Sugar Style Sugar Alternative. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> mm. Oh my word. Before that even gets in my mouth, you guys, I'm smelling that wonderful chocolate smell. Mmm. You know, how you can smell a brownie before you actually taste it. That is so good. Look at that, you guys. Mmm. So good. And you even have that tiny bit of that almost crispy crust on top. Oh. And I love that about a brownie, don't you? So, you guys are going to have to give these a try. If you saw how easy they are to make, these are a wonderful thing to make when you have very, very little time and you're looking for a dessert for that family get-together or you need to take it with you somewhere. Oh, love it. Put it in one of those, you know, one of those pans that has the lid on it and then the carrying case, like my secret sister just gave me for Christmas. Yay. All right, so when you guys try these, make sure you leave me a comment. Tell me how it worked out for you. And we're going to love to hear from you on this. And, sorry, and Liz just reminded me, these brownies, you guys, are going to be the base of our peppermint snowball sundae. So don't forget to check out that video, too. You're going to love that one as well. And we'll see you next time, you guys, on Things Tina Does.